What's up, movie Jewish Modern fans? It's me again. I'm back. Not going to waste any more time with the details. I'm back trying to catch up on all the Shmodern ma- matches that I've missed from the last uh, month or so. With pizza, because why not? Pizza always makes Shmodown better. Uh, this one is between Jessica Sloth and Dan Merle. And as you can see right now, I love Dan Merle. But today I'm kind of rooting for the underdog. I don't know. I had a conversation on Mount Schmodown with, with some friends of mine on, you know, the possibility, entertaining the possibility that Jessica might pull out a victory over the GOAT himself, Dan Merle. Still have the dungeon right here, you know, because I'm still, uh, I'm still a Dan Merle fan. I'm still supporting the, the GOAT. But, you know, what if, you know, what if Jessica wins? Let's just entertain the possibility. As you can see, all of my plushies are starting to uh, get really annoyed with this promo, so uh, I'm just going to jump right in. Obviously, as per usual, participating myself, but I'll be more focused on my pizza rather than uh, answering questions. So here we go! Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. It is the ultimate showdown. It is the singles tournament. And man, Mark, I have been rejuvenated when it has come to both the in studio matches, whether it's the cantina, the collision, any of it. I am uh, so excited, but I'm also very excited because it's tournament season. Tournaments are where legends are made, new stars are born. Yeah. And that certainly can be the case here today with the legend himself, Dangerous Dan Merle five-time champion against rookie sensation Jessica Schloff. Yeah, folks, Christian Harloff was hanging on for dear life there during the end of the fully technical era, kind of like a kid in the back seat waiting to get to grandma's house. Put your shoes on, Christian. We're here. But we are virtual today because that's the style that you're going to see for the majority of these tournament matches. And by the way, the tournament matches, not just important for the competitors, but for the factions, can be a monster deal because you can rack up a lot of points in a hurry. Points that both the dungeon and the den would love to have today. Yeah, so the den just picking up a uh, they picked up an IG first round with Saul and but they they've they're making they made some interesting moves inside of the singles tournament. So Jessica Schloth is one and one so far in mm-hmm. singles this year. And because Two of that, great matches, she drew a tough, a tough draw. We know that. And she's going up against Dangerous Dan Merle. He's the five-time movie trivia showdown champion. He is in this tournament because he just barely lost against Ethan Irwin, the reigning champion. But uh, Dan has not been in a tournament in a, in a while, in a singles tournament in a long time. So What's it going to be like? He hasn't played in a, a three-round match. I guess he played against Snyder in the beginning of the year, but he, you know, he's not. He's used to playing in five-round matches. So does Schloth almost have the advantage here today because she's used to playing in these singles three-round matches here, and Dan hasn't been trying to go on the up and up. He's got. He's in a place right now, Mark. He's got to win five matches in order to get a title shot, which is unheard of. I don't think he's. He's never had to do that in his in his long career. Yeah, I think Dan's going to be just fine going back to three rounds. I think where the advantage comes in here is Dan's experience in competition because he's just seen about it all in his many great years of service to the Schmodown. But I'll also say this for Jessica Schloth is that she does not seem intimidated by anyone. She seems nope. even keel. Does not matter who she's played. And already in her young career, we've seen her in some tough scraps, some wins that she got. I mean, she got that win barely. She also had a loss barely. So she's been in every contest she's been in so far, and you know she's looking to make a statement against another Florida State alumni here today. That Seminole pipeline just keeps churning out talent. Let's see exactly how and how different both of these competitors' paths are. Here we go. This crop of rookies that we have this season, they know the game, they know what they want to do, and they want to keep moving. Schloth just would not go quietly into the night and kept on fighting. That was, she put up a fight. You can look at this match and see how the future is going to be great with her. I mean, I would definitely love to play again. I will learn in that process too, and I'll be even better in my next match. So it turns out I'm playing someone named Dan Merle. Jessica Sloth, welcome to the Big Leagues.
the GOAT, Dan Merle. Now former champion, but five-time champion. What is the plan moving forward? What's the thoughts? Are you coming back for the six? Uh, if there's any question about what I'm doing next, the answer is I'm going into the singles tournament. I'm going to win. This is what we're doing now. Smell that. Dan Merle versus Jeff Smoke. Rookies. He's the you know you're going to see that determination when he enters the singles tournament. And you're right. I wouldn't want to be that person going, oh, great, I got Dan Merle. Oh, that's a tough yeah. draw. I may or may not on one occasion have said Dan is my favorite player. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Did you ever imagine in all your years as a fan that in your inaugural season in the Schmodown you'd be playing Dan Merle in a singles tournament? I asked Dan back in season two if he thought in season eight that he'd be playing Jessica Schloth, and he said, there's no way this drinking contest gets out of season two. People are probably thinking, oh, that stinks for you. You're playing Dan in the first round. But do I say, no, I get to play Dan Earl in the first round. Like, he's a legend. But when you consider the fact that both competitors were educated at Florida State, that's pretty even. They both have the same weakness. So yeah, we're both at the same round. I'm um, pretty sure he might have graduated before I was born, but that's okay. Just because Dan Merle's been assessed a late fee for not rewinding a VHS tape at Blockbuster does not give him an advantage. Just because Dan Merle can remember when Jim Carrey was funny does not put a win out of Jessica's reach. Just because Dan Merle can remember when The Punisher was a bad movie instead of three bad movies does not mean he's got this match locked up. Do you want to know what my favorite match of his is? Oh, a certain match where everyone thought he was going to win against a competitor they thought he was better than. And I've been telling her, Jess, if you win, this is the biggest upset in Schmodown history. A one-in-one -one rookie beating the former six-time champion. I know more than anybody, there's no such thing as an underdog match on any given game. Anything can happen. And so whoever I'm facing, I'm going to be ready, and they better be ready for my A game. You want to play David versus Goliath? OK, put that go. Yeah, remember who nowadays. won. I hope it's mine. If it isn't, I lost to Dan Merle. Like, let's do this. Personally, I think the league owes Jessica an apology. They've been throwing everything they can at the dungeon all season trying to take us down. Collins, Marisol, Harper, Chance, Kalinowski, Irwin, over and over and over, trying to take us down. And what did it get you? Dan Murrow in the singles tournament. Gee, I hope you had fun, because we're about to have some of our own. That was a good promo, I gotta say. Look, as you see, Dangerous Dan Merle has always been playing at the top level. He is, as a lot of people will say, the Michael Jordan of the movie Trivia Showdown. For what he has done, his accomplishments, he's a five-time champion, team's champion, countless amounts of defenses. Um, and Jessica Schloth was, uh, is, a part, is, is what you and I always talk about. The evolution of the Schmodown competitor, of the people who are not in the space, like, oh, I'd like to try to this thing out this was a hardcore fan she used to come to the live events she would be there she's probably seen dan. she has seen dan play live in or in orlando when she was there so orlando! the question is can you separate that as a fan can you say all right you know what in or because if jessica Schloth lives up to the nickname as the sleeper and takes out dan merle career made that's that's all that's really she probably had go on to do other great things but that's that is like almost winning a championship for the for the young competitor uh, she may not be Tyson, but she certainly no Buster Douglas either in that being that she might get a, a huge knockout today. That's not going to be the career defining moment going forward. It's going to be a great stepping stone for her. But look, this is all preamble to the fact that you also have a den squad that desperately needs a win. They got some momentum in IG. Now they're looking to do the same thing in singles. And for Dungeon, they're just looking to hang on to whatever points they have racked up in the beginning half of the season, looking to make that push to establish themselves as the faction of the year once and for all how about you you ready oh yeah yeah I'm pumped. ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen it's time for, for the movie trivia showdown introducing first representing the dead with a record of one win one defeat she is the sleeper, Jessica Schloth! 
Jessica Schloth, FSU, FSU. And it is absolutely wonderful to see you as always. So let me ask you a question. You go into this turn. You've been following this game for a while. So you know that when you are entered into this 32-person tournament, that the draw will probably be someone that you've been watching for a long time. Did you think it could be Dan? Were you ever hoping that it could be Dan? What were your thoughts when you found out it was Dan Merle that you were playing? I had many feelings about it because, like, I've obviously been a fan for a while, so I've watched his career. I've said multiple times, I think, that he's been my favorite competitor at some point. So, like, it is intimidating, definitely, that that's who I'm playing. Um, but I'm still excited. Like, at the same time, he's my favorite, so it's kind of, like, an honor, in a way, to play him. But I got chosen to do that. So I'm excited, kind of nervous, but... It's a good mix of excitement and nerves here. And when you look at your favorite competitor, Dan, we also know who your favorite manager is. That, I assume, would be Kate Mulligan of the Den. What have those conversations been like leading up to this match? What has she told you? What have you told her? Who's keeping the other one calm here, Jess? Um, I think... I think we're both just, you know, I think that I kind of... it's sort of his match to lose so like i'm just gonna try my best and go in with like you know if i bust a bracket that would be awesome um yeah, well so yeah. just before we get dan in here to or do you so because i know how tight the den is and all the study sessions that you guys do what's some of the advice that your fellow competitors are or your teammates faction mates rather are telling you go, going into this match with dan um I think just to like play my own game and to just try my best and get as many points as I can and then whatever shakes out happens. Um, but just to try to stay level-headed and not think about who I'm playing. <laughs> and her opponent representing the dungeon for the record of 18 wins. Seven defeats and eight knockouts. He is the former movie trivia showdown team champion and the former five time movie trivia showdown champion of the world, Dangerous. Dan Merle, as I said to you before, Dan, it is, we, we haven't called a three-rounder for a little bit for you, but we also haven't seen you in a tournament in a little bit. And when was the last time, if ever, you had to win five matches in order to get back to that belt you've held five times? You're muted. You you're muted. No, you're muted. Good. Yep. Uh, I, I can't think of another time, honestly. It's it's uh, to be in a tournament this size, to be in the position not only on a personal level, but on a faction level for the dungeon. I'm not just playing for myself. I'm playing for an incredible faction of other people. Uh, what has turned into two incredible managers this mm -hmm. season. Uh, there's a lot at stake. There's a lot on the line here. And I've got to go in, and I know that I'm going to have my work cut out for me. You don't need to tell me how uh, possible it is to be upset in the movie trivia showdown. Believe me, I know more than anybody else what it's like. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of my question, Dan. You were at Florida State University at a time when you had the legendary late great Bobby Bowden coaching, and you all went to just about every game, particularly just those scrappy Wake Forest Demon Deacons, as huge favorites. And now you find yourself in that position more often than not in the movie trivia showdown. Do you like that? Do you relish it being the, the heavy favorite, being the King Kong of the movie trivia showdown? Or do you actually kind of prefer being somewhat on a level playing field and having people say, well, no, it could go Dan's way, could go someone else's way. I mean, I prefer being on the level playing field because that's the reality of the game. And when you look at this game, particularly over the last year or two years, the number of blowouts um, has decreased exponentially. I mean, I, I'm very proud of the, the, the knockouts and TKOs that I have on my record, but even, you know, looking at my gameplay, when's the last time I was able to rack up one of those? It's been a while. And that's mm -hmm. because the level of play has increased. You now have factions that get together that prep players 
Uh, I know that Jessica has been doing it. I know that I've been doing it as well. I know that every opponent I face has been doing it. So, you know, it's I don't like to be put up on a pedestal because that's just further to fall. I think the reality of this game is almost every match is a pick 'em, And that's how I treat every match going in. There was no ever any talk on my part or my manager's part or the dungeon about any kind of uh, 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 easy game or whatever, because we know these players, we know these managers and these factions, they're going to coach these players up and they're gonna show up ready to play. All right, Mark, our competitors are ready. Round number one is about to begin. What are the rules? It's like Chris Ricks facing Charlie Ward. I don't know who is who, but I do know this. Round number one features I eight I questions, three are. different corners, a movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Each question is worth a point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. At least there isn't. In round at number one, we'll ask the question. You have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever writing surface you prefer. And I feel like I just heard a marker. That would be your writing <laughs> utensil. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. Name for famed FSU lineman JTE. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge. You may utilize at any point throughout the three round match. We'll bring in managers, we'll deliver it to our heart's content, and it will be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. Christian, I do believe JTE was Burt Reynolds' roommate at Florida State. Fact. All right, so I ask Dan Merle, are you ready? I am ready. Jess, are you ready? I am ready. Then let's, let's get, get ready, ready to Schmodown! Round number one, question number one. We're gonna start with animated films. Which 2016 animated film features the voice talents of Russell Brand, Anna Kendrick, Gwen Stefani, and Justin Timberlake? You know, people say I look like an amalgamation of all of those people. <laughs> Some of them. But I'm not going to tell you which ones. Uh, I want you to guess. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, and Dan. I trolls. Said, trolls. With a yes. Z. Jess. It's trolls, trolls with a Z. We are tied at one. Going to the next question mark. Both competitors on the board. Your next category is fantasy sci-fi. And the question. Who plays the villainous Blackbeard alongside Levi Miller's Peter Pan and Garrett Hedlund's Hook in the 2015 film Pan? My daughter has come back and watched this one um, quite often. She was on a big Peter Pan. Yeah. Why would anyone uh, watch that movie again? Uh, I'm not going to apologize. You're not nice. Five. Like, did you not learn four, the first time? Three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. And Jess? Huge Hugh Ackman. Yes, and Dan. Hugh Jackman. Tie game as we get to question number three. We're going to go to rom coms. Which actress appears in the films Good Luck Chuck, Valentine's Day, and The Love Guru? So you saw Pan that morning. Do you know what we did that night? I don't think you can hear all three of those movies and not talk about how abysmal all three of those movies are. <laughs> the answer is Van Halen. Um, we went to go see that. Four, three, two. Repeat the question. First one. Here it is. Which actress appears in the films Good Luck Chuck, Valentine's Day, and The Love Guru? It's Jessica Sloth's first. I think All right, I so know I put you at the movie theater and you have the to actress, see one of these. But I can't pull the name. Oh, I'd probably. I mean, that's tough. Um, five. I'd probably go with Good Luck Chuck. Four, three, two, mm. one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we're going to start with Dan. It's uh, Jessica Beale. It's incorrect. And yes. I ain't for anything. <laughs> Looking for Jessica Alba. Jessica oh, Alba. The other Jessica. Right. Right. Yeah, so both competitors miss on that one. Uh, no perfect rounds. So it is still a tie game. All right, we move on to horror slash thriller movies. Christian loves them. I mean, Your I'm question still tied for with both of them. This horror film from director Wes Craven features performances from Rory Culkin, David Arquette, Hayden Panettiere, and Anthony Anderson. Anthony Anderson was so good in 2040. Does anybody remember that? No. 
I yeah, right. It's really good, Ned. What no, season? A few of them, I think. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Hands up, please. And we start here with Jess. No, it's not right. But I wrote scream. Uh, it's correct. And Dan? Scream four. That's correct. What scream are the four. screams? So Jess, again, said almost there. Just missed by one number. All right, here we go. Next question. This is number five. This is biopics. Biopics. Who was nominated for a Best Actress Academy Award for her role as Tanya Harding in the film I, Tanya? I still like saying biopics better. I think it just rolls off the tongue. It just unfortunately isn't um, accurate. It's better than eradicated, I'll tell you that. Eradicated. It's, wrong right. word. Four, three, two. You're no hopeless. Question. One. Uh, second one. Who was nominated for a Best Actress Academy Award for her role as Tanya Harding in the film I, Tanya? You're wrong. You're radiated. Radiated. I thought it was eradicated. That's probably why you. <laughs> probably what I was looking at. You went one. 0 for 7. Yeah, 5. <laughs> close to it. 4. 3. Repeat again. I'm sorry. <laughs> last one. Oh. All right. Last one. Here it is. Oh, gosh. Who was nominated That's for a Best Actress Academy Award happen, for her role as Tanya Harding in the film mm -hmm. I, Tanya? That's Jessica's last JT. Yeah, well, it says in the Bible. That's why the good Lord gave you three JTE rules. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you got to use them. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and Dan. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Yes. Jess? Margot Robbie. You got there. So it's there Margot you go. Robbie it is four, three. She four. used the JTEs, but she got the point. So Margot it was not Robbie a wasted moment for picking up the point. All right. What's the next? Come on, guys. The up next here. one is, of Michael course, the category Robbie of the kids love it. comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Much appreciated. Your question for a point. Whoopi Goldberg, Kathy Najimy, Maggie Smith, Jennifer Love Hewitt, and James Coburn all appear in what 1993 comedy? I think I know it. I, I believe. Yes. Or did oh. they win the national championship in 93? 93. I think That's Charlie Ward was 91 um, or 92. Oh, that was 93. Five. Four, three. No, it's not that one. Two, one. Oh. Hands down. Hands up, please. And we start here with Jess. Is it Sister Act Back in the Habit? That is correct. And Dan? Okay, it wasn't the one. Was Sister thinking. Act 2. Also correct. Yeah. Sister Act 2, Sister Act Back in the Habit. We'll accept both. All right. So it is Acceptable. five, four. Merle up by one as we get to our next question. Family Films. Which actor plays Robert, a single dad who has a romance with Amy Adams' character in the Disney film Enchanted? You know, I don't know when the last time you saw Sister Act 2 is. We covered it on the great podcast, Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong. It's really good. Uh, it's a good movie. And is, it, is that really the one? Good. Five, four, three, two, one. I think it's him. Hands down. And we start with Dan Merle. Is it James Marsden? Yeah, Sean Correct. Bean? And Jess? Sean Penn, sorry. Patrick Dempsey. That's correct. Jess, Jess ties it yeah. up. 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five as we get to the James Marsden plays the prince in that in movie. This round. That's right. No perfect rounds here. We got us a tied ball game. Few JT rules to get here, but here we are. Even up with your last question, round one. For a point, the category's movie release dates and the question. The best picture winner, Parasite was released in what year? So it is tied up at the moment. Yeah. So it's not backing down at all. Merle looking to surge ahead with this last question. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and we're gonna start here with Jess. The year before everything went wrong. Yes, and Dan. 2019. So it's tied up, 6-6 six, six, going into round number two. The sleeper tied up with Dangerous Dan Merle, 6-6 six, six, as we get into the second round, the wheel round. How's it go? 
Round number two works as thus. It's the wheel round. We don't have the sort of cheddar to send you each wheel, so one. we're going to spin the virtual one. I know people have their issues. I personally love it. Why? Because it has so many great questions lying inside. Once you settle on a realm, you're going to hear four of those questions. Each one's worth two points. But you There's can no say penalty the same for missing a question. However, wheel, right? stealing is available. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We're not sure either, but we have four options, one of which we're told is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. Challenges, JTE rules still in effect. Dan Merle retains all of his JTE rules, and it is going to be by proxy of tiebreaker alone. Dan Merle's decision. Dan, do you want to spin that wheel first or defer to your opponent? I will defer to my opponent. Hi. So that feels, listen, first of all, right now, it's the end of the first round and you're tied with Dan Merle. How does that yeah. feel? Let that sink in. Okay, great. <laughs> so listen, you spent the JTEs, but that yeah. it got it, but it's fine because it got you to where you are right now. So right now we're it's neck and neck, okay? So you know if you don't get to the third round, it doesn't matter if you have JTEs or not. We're getting to that third round today, sister. We're staying neck and neck with him, and you're even I, you're gonna be ahead of him right now, okay? So I need you to brace yourself for what it's gonna feel like for the next for, for this next round that you're gonna be ahead of him, okay? Take it in, enjoy it, take your time. I knew you knew that answer. You spent the JTEs. I don't, I'm not gonna say that was not a good use of them because it's got you to where you are. 10 okay? seconds. So mm -hmm. you feeling good? Yes. Okay, go to multiple if you need to because you don't have the JTE. So I'd rather you get one point than no, okay? All right, and here is the spin. She got M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> All right, spin it there. Kate has not invited me over for a cocktail in many weeks. You know what? Kate doesn't get here. Ooh. And it is on This could be interesting for her. Well, well, what do you think? What do you think? I've seen I've this seen gotten spun lately, 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 and, lately, and questions, questions are kind of deep are... now, now. But I feel, I like, feel like I like it better than other things on this wheel, so I probably should keep it. All right. So we have young adult. There's going to be four questions for. Jess, in the world of young adult movies, Jess, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Question one. Which actor stars as Daniel slash John Smith slash number four in the 2011 film I Am Number Four? Alex Pettifer. Correct for two points. Both has the lead. Here's the next question. Zoe Deutsch stars as Samantha Kingston a young woman that keeps waking up on Cupid's Day in which 2017 film? Who are you calling Cupid's Day? Guess that reference. Before I fall. It's correct for two points. All right. What is, the name, what is the name of the small parasitic aliens that travel to other planets, inserting themselves into a host body in the 2013 film, The Host? Multiple choice. Is it A, spirits, B, hosts, C, souls, D? I feel like host is the obvious. Well, I D was that. body. Okay. Broke up. I feel like host is the obvious answer. But then that could be um, misleading. A. a, spirits is incorrect. Dan, for an opportunity to steal. What is the name of the small parasitic aliens that travel to other planets inserting themselves into a host body in the 2013 film, The Host? Is it A, spirits, B, hosts, C, souls, B, bodies? C, souls. It's correct for one wow. point. Wow, big steal there. Nobody took the host bait. <laughs> yep. All right, here is the- I did. Last question. Who's the host? Here it is. Which 2015 young adult film features an erudite leader named Janine and her mind-controlled dauntless soldiers? Insurgent? Divergent? Is incorrect. I feel like Divergent Here was 2014 and Insurgent Which 2015, 2015 YA film features an erudite leader named 
Janine and her mind controlled yeah. dauntless yeah, soldiers. Yeah, the erudite leader was introduced in Insurgent. That was. Uh, Insurgent. Um, that is correct for two points. So. That was, that was I was quite here the year, so I wasn't sure I didn't ever repeat. Oh, uh, uh, well, so that is the. That is the round there. And so at the moment, it is 10 9 Merle down by one. And now we get to Dan Merle's spin. How's it feel, champ? <laughs> Listen, uh, no, no easy victories. We've been saying this from the beginning. No easy victories. Uh, man, I, I admire the fact that you trained for this match like you were playing Ethan Irwin again today, and I think it's really paying off. And I, I, I think the fact that you got those two steals it should put you in a great mental space for this. So, you know how I feel. We can psychically psych out the wheel. Let's psychically psych out the wheel and get what you want, baby. Let's do it. All right, Chris, when you come at the wheel, you best no. not miss. No. no. I don't know that Dan Merle proves that Listen. tactic of pumping the wheel. Opponent's choice. Shot. All right, opponent's choice. Jess, we didn't even strategize about this, but hopefully you did with your better your better managers, also known as your teammates. Mm -hmm. Listen, I mean, you could give this guy anything, and he's gonna do. He's gonna. He's gonna. You know, he'll he'll do great with it. But do you have any guts, or did anybody else have any other advice? I'm leaning towards rom coms. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Okay. Uh um, yeah, I mean, rom-coms, I feel like he really loves Kevin Hart. We know he knows. I would say, or, or what about DreamWorks? I think he could I agree. still do decently. I mean, he got the first question right, so. Okay. That's okay, great. Yeah, Let's go with it, sister. <laughs> All right, Dan, you're going to get four questions in the realm of rom-coms. All right, Dan, my name's Mark. I'll be administering your <laughs> rom-coms question. A lot of romance. We usually fall in love at the end, but we have some laughs along the way. For two points, your first question of four in round number two. What 1990s teenage rom-com had the tagline, How do I loathe thee? Let me count the ways. Ten things I hate about you. Ten things I hate about you. Co-starring Christian and I's close personal friend Larry Miller. That is correct for two points. I mean, and Merle that was kind of an obvious back answer. in the lead by one over slow. Three questions remaining in rom coms. Your next the, one. Uh, what Nickelodeon actress played the character of Viola Hastings in 2006's She's the Man? Hmm. Amanda Bynes. Two Dan more Dines. points for Dan. He loves his Nickelodeon and apparently his rom-coms, Christian. <laughs> his penultimate question in the world of romantic comedies comes right now for two more points. Which actress stars as a young chef who encounters magic and finds love in 1999's Simply Irresistible? Hmm. Take multiple choice. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, Jennifer Love Hewitt, B, Sarah Michelle Gellar, C, Melissa Joan Hart, or D, Alicia Silverstone? C, Melissa Joan Hart. That is incorrect. And so we now go for a steal opportunity to Jessica, your question and options once again. Which actor stars as a young chef who encounters magic and finds love in chef. 1999's Simply Irresistible? Is it A, Jennifer Love Hewitt, B, Sarah Michelle Gellar, C, Melissa Joan Hart, or D, Alicia Silverstone? Hmm. It's either Michelle Gellar or Alicia Silverstone. A. Is it an apple? Uh, guess not. A is an apple. It's also incorrect. We're looking for B, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Hmm. Simply irresistible. Underrated gem from that year. I was considering now, that answer, but I it's didn't It's a three-point lead, so I don't, and Dan Merle has one more question. Point. If he hits it right off the bat, he'll enjoy a five-point advantage going into round number three, but that steal opportunity could still lurk. So, Dan, your final question. Rom-coms. Olympia Dukakis won her first Academy Award for her role in this 1987 rom-com directed by Norman Jewison. Moonstruck. He is correct for two points, and just like that is a 15 to 10 ball game in favor of Dan Merle Christian. He's got a five point lead as we careen into round number three. All right, it's round number three, and as you said, Merle takes a five point lead. 
It is. The last round, Mark, how do the rules work? Round number three is the round that will determine the match, unless we go to sudden death overtime, which I'm being told in my ear we are prepared for. Here's how it works. We need some help from each competitor. The help comes in the form of numbers. We need three numerals from each of you. You may not pick the same integer as your opponent, as each one corresponds to a unique category, Schmodown Mystery. Your first question is going to be worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. And your final question, five points points a total of 10 points available to each competitor in this round there's no penalty for missing a question and there is no stealing in round number three there's just a whole lot of numbers starting with you dangerous dan merle from one to 20. You i'll three take numbers Oops, sorry i'll take 13 3 and 11. i was building suspense dan apologies 13 3 and 11 for dan and for jess i'll do seven four 19. All right. That's been, I mean, hey, look, I'm a, I'm a Sean Patrick Flannery stan, right? You know, so I, I, it's, it's, it's a little upsetting that you miss Simply Irresistible, one of the most popular movies of all time. But I think you're ready to go into the third, uh, third round here anyway. How are you feeling? Hey, listen, again, it's our motto. No easy victories. Fight to the last question. We knew this was a possibility. I'm prepared to do it. She's got work to do, but I have no doubt that she is able to do it. Fight to the five. That's been our motto. That's been the season. Let's do it. This this could have come out of my mouth, Dan. That's fantastic. You have you have cheered yourself up, got yourself ready for the third round. I'm gonna take the rest of the time off. <laughs> hey, this is listen. It's not the position we want to be in. You got to answer. You get two. You got to answer your three. It's gonna bounce back. But look, bottom line, you can do this. And just really take your time. Don't worry about anything happening in the chat. Just stay focused. You you know so many things. And, and about so many different areas too. Like this, there's there's no reason why you cannot fight this to the finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of upset with a couple of things that happened in round two, but yes, listen. It happens. You know, but it happens. also, also at this point, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about yeah. it? Yeah, we gotta just we just <laughs> keep going forward. Keep going forward. It's okay. We can do this. Okay, hang in there. We're playing Dan Merle. I've never played Dan Merle. You've legitimized me here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with Jess and Mark. She chose category seven for her two point question. Yes, she did. And Joe Theismann's lucky number corresponds to the category of scores and soundtracks, our most musical category. And for two points to cut the lead to three, Jessica, your question is Prince won an Oscar for best original song score. For what 1984 film, which included such hits as Let's Go Crazy and When Doves Cry? That'd be Purple Rain. Odd color for rain, but it suits <laughs> Prince, and it is also correct for two points. And now Jessica Schloth is in the position to tie the ball game if she can hit her three-point question. Yes, yeah, she needs to hit her three-point to tie the game and avoid the TKO. She chose category four. Julia Roberts. And apologies to Christian, but I will be asking this Julia Roberts question. Here we are. Three points to tie the ball game and to avoid the TKO. Who plays Philip Stuckey, Edward's insensitive lawyer, in the film Pretty Woman? Five, four, three, two. Richard Gears. Oh, I know. It's a great guess. We're looking for Costanza, Jason Alexander. All right. So here's where we are. Jessica needs to hit this five pointer. If she does, then she forces Dan to start answering some questions. If she doesn't, Dan Merle will pick up a TKO and advance to the second round. Jess, you chose category 19. That is is in the category of remakes and reboots. Remakes that is right for five points and the lead. They made these movies and they're like, you know what, let's try and make them again. <laughs> and now one of those films is the subject of your five point question. Potentially more than just one. For the lead. Cody Smith McPhee stars as Owen, a young boy who befriends a vampire in this horror remake. I was sorry to jump at the 
um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes answer, but guess not. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> and your winner! Dangerous! And more! Answer was let me in. Let me, let me in! Let the right one. Look, that was a uh, that was a tough fight there for Dan because he had the first round was tied. Second round, he got opponent's choice. He did pretty well in rom coms. That's ultimately what saved him with that with that big five point cushion going into the uh, third round. It was very impressive by Jessica Schloth because she started this match and said, "No, this is not a Goliath David situation. We're on a level playing field," and that's how the majority of this match felt. I mean, you were tied going into round number two. She had a couple tough steals that Dan was able to intercept, but all in all. She adjudicated herself very well. And like you said, maybe it's not that monster stepping stone to a career that a victory would have been, but I still think a lot of experience can be gleaned by looking right in the eye of a champ or a former champ like Dan Merle. Now for Merle, this is what he thought he could do in the tournament when it's a revenge-minded Dan Merle. Everyone else in the league better look out. That's who we saw here today, and that's who is now going to have an interview with our own Jen Sturger. And I guess we'll let Adam Witt participate as well. Jen, best of luck. Listen, I consider any day I don't have to deal with Kaiser a win. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Dan, on a fantastic match. Uh, well, I have to say, were you a little bit nervous after that first round? Because I know you say no easy matches, um, but were you expecting your opponent to come out swinging the way she did? I was. I expect that of everyone that I play. By the way, wonderful to be talking to you, Jen. Um, Thank you so much, Dan. I, so I, I, I expect sorry, everyone. Uh, <laughs> I expect everyone to come out swinging, and that was one of those things. Mara has this phrase that she uses all the time. I think she picked it up in the Navy: 50, 50, 90, which is when you have a 50, 50 chance. 90% of the time, you're going to pick the wrong one because I wasn't sure on both of those questions. The the two Jessicas and uh, Patrick Dempsey versus James Marsden, and I went wrong both times. And uh, you know that 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 costs me points. And, and listen, I Dan, there aren't many times that you get a question wrong that I'm sitting there going, I know the answer to that one. And yeah. but today was one of those times. Yeah, so I don't know, know, you know that. Dan, when you're under the you spotlight, you, you, you start doubting everything. You start doubting your name. You start doubting, uh, you know, your 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 mom's maiden name. There's so many different things that you know. In the moment you're like, wait, is that? And, and you know, I just second guessed myself, and and I missed two. I was, I was, I consider myself lucky to come out with, with a victory. Uh, no, not not to mention a TKO. And then you get round two, opponent's <laughs> choice. Yeah. Oh. Oh, the fates. Oh, the fates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is a, I feel like this is a crazy, stupid question to ask you, but because I feel like you're one of those opponents that takes the times that they've failed and learns from it. But were you a little nervous when you got when they handed you rom coms? Um, yes, because I've been in that exact situation. Uh, I heavily know. hyped a match. <laughs> I'm 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 doing probably not as well as some people would expect. I hit opponent's choice and I get rom coms. A lot of memories came flooding back into the old <laughs> noggin. So yes, I was extremely nervous. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Showdown, for playing out every nightmare that Dan had about the possibilities of this match. Yes. <laughs> you wouldn't believe what I had to go through. Oh, oh, you hey. You wouldn't believe uh, what I had to go what through. What the hell? Uh, 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 sorry. sorry. Um, Would you shoot the match already? No, I mean, it was, I, I told you there wasn't a match today, but I, but there, I mean, there was, and, and it was. It, uh, What's up, champ? What the hell's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he played Jessica today. I didn't, I didn't know, well, I mean, I didn't know if I should tell you, because you just got back, you'd be jet lagged. I, I don't know, I just. Uh, Wait, did he win? Uh, did he win? Uh, this is getting a little awkward, guys. He, he did you win. don't mind. He did win. But oh, let's take this off. Let's take this off. Yeah, off I'm gonna. Show. I got other interviews to do. That, yeah. Okay. Let me. Let me just. Uh, let me just uh, discuss this after. What's going on? Go ahead. Man? Just. Yeah. Well, that was awkward. So, wait. What? Some, uh, it doesn't look like Kaiser knew the match was happening today. That's a. It's an interesting turn of events. But nonetheless, Dan Merle gets the victory. Kaiser arrives back from wherever he was, but looks like Kaiser wanted to manage that match, but. But I don't know. That's, uh, that, that looks like something. Something's unfolding, Mark. Something's unfolding. Hey, look! If we were a fly on the wall in that apartment, then we'd probably be joined by many other flies in said apartment. So let's look at 
the other side of this match where you have the Den looking to score a major upset and got closer than a lot of folks may have expected, and that's on the strength of Jessica Schlo's breadth of knowledge when it comes to movie trivia. She did just as well as Dan did in round number one. She played very well in round two, just stumbled into some questions. She couldn't quite conjure, and she'd already exhausted her JTE rule supply before getting into round number three. And so definitely a learning experience, but you got to think that the rest of the Den, her manager, Kate Mulligan, pretty proud of the performance she put forth. Yeah, and we're going to see exactly how she felt. She said there was a couple things around two she was upset with and, and other things. And Jen will be talking to Jessica Schloth and Kate Mullen. I swear to God, if Kaiser comes into my house, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope he's quick. not making house calls. Uh, That's a um, <laughs> big hope of mine. Oh, tough loss today, Jess. Uh, but let's... Let's give credit where credit is due. Uh, you were tied leaving round one against Dan Merle. Can we talk about this for a second? <laughs> like, I yeah. think said it best. Like, that was something to be walk away proud of regardless. Yeah, I was very surprised, like, that that happened. Like, I was expecting <laughs> him to get, like, all the answers. And I was like, oh, six. Like, it's about what I've done. But, um, yeah. Those. I do gotta ask you though, you know, one. do you regret burning all those JTs in round one? You know, I, I I do think Kate said said it best, you know, like you don't get to round three if you don't survive round one and round two, so use the JTEs if you need to, but do you regret using some of them in in round one? Yeah, I definitely well, one of them Margot Robbie's name just like wasn't coming to me for a second. Like that happened, so I was like, Oh, I gotta use JTE because like I know the answer. And then I got to that and then I overthought it and yeah when I started writing Alice and Janney and then I was like, wait, who did they ask for? So then I was like, you gotta repeat again to like, and yeah, that's never good to use all three, but learning opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely. Kate, were there things that you, you took away from her performance in those first two rounds that you think that, you know, one are, are good to build on and two, like things that you guys can learn from? Well, yeah, I mean, I think the, the reason Jess is even in this tournament for us is she's actually just been such, she's been so instrumental in 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 the in the team, uh, in the faction. And I felt like she she deserved this spot. And, uh, you know, I think I think she's showing that she does have a breadth, a wide breadth of, of knowledge. And Absolutely. I think, I think, you know, I think gameplay, there's some gameplay stuff that we could talk about that wasn't ideal for today using all the JTs in, in round one uh, is, is an example of that. But also, you know, I'm, I'm proud of her. She came out and also she she really did this without any help from me whatsoever. We didn't even touch base before this because I've been traveling. I mean, it's just I my kids are back in school. It's just been a, a big I had a sick kid. It's just there's this is when having a mom as a manager is not good because she's not the momager. So I, I feel like the, the prep that we saw her do, she did that with her teammates and uh and i just feel like she's been such a um just a huge asset to this this entire faction and so i'm proud of what she did here today and uh, you know I, I i my takeaway from today is like i have to i have to remember that i do i have to make time to you know we should have we should have i should have had a plan with her what we're going to do for opponent's choice we didn't have to talk it out you know i so i take that's said so I take some of that on myself as well. With what happened Kate, today? Yeah, I'll I'll say this, you know, and I I don't say this lightly. You're one of those people that like when things go wrong, you'll take you'll shoulder all of the blame, but when things go right, you don't take any of the praise or the or the uh, spotlight. That is true. So I mean, I I totally get it, <laughs> but I, I think at the same time, I'm trying to figure out. I don't out. think you give yourself enough credit when it comes okay. to the way you're managing your players. She needs but that to said, you know, taking all the blame. They say yeah. that. Playing Some great blame, players maybe, but... really makes you raise your level of your game. She and you feel like just now that you've tangled with right Dan now. Merle, the go, you know, Dan, Mer Dan freaking Merle, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and you more than held your own. Do you think that whoever you play now, like the nerves won't be as bad because you've already like faced, like you've already faced the biggest bad guy in the video game, you know? Yeah. The final I boss. Think you definitely... faced the final boss. <laughs> That's what I said! Yeah, from my last match, I was like, oh, I just want to play. I'll play anyone. And then it's like, okay, you want to play anyone? You want to play Dan anyone? I was like, Here! I mean, that big of a jump, but um, <laughs> that's what we're doing. Oh. And so I feel, yeah, now that that's happened, 
I mean, hey, could play him again later <laughs> in the future. I, I love that confidence. I love it, you know? And you've also learned your lesson not to say, sure, Christian, anybody's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anybody uh, within reason. Anybody now, within reason. Yep. Anybody with my same record. You know, it's the same. Uh, here's the thing. Area. Again, we're happy to play this year. And I think that the truth is, these, these are my star rookies. Jess and Peggy, and they are a di I mean, the, the, truly, they are, they are the heartbeats, two of the heartbeats of this faction. And I think we're happy to have any match. And I think Peggy is preparing for Adam Collins the way she would be. You don't go into a tournament not thinking that at some point you could win it. So if you got to win it, at some point you're going to come across an Adam Collins. At some point you're going to come across a Dan Merle. Did it happen to us in the first round? Yes. Uh, do I feel like that necessarily means we're not going to win those matches? No. And I think that if we really felt like we had no chance we would just drop out of the tournament and you will not see us doing that we are uh, peggy is absolutely capable jess is absolutely capable and this is listen this is what you do when you when you put rookies that are one one into a tournament this is the seed they get and you can cry about it you can whine about it but also you can put your pants on and show up and give dan merle a run for his money so listen whenever we're, we're anybody thinks of when anybody thinks the match is insurmountable, I just always like to bring up the match that had us all with our jaws on the floor, and that's Dan Merle, Andrew Guy. Yeah, I was gonna so say. Whatever you think any outcome is unattainable, just know that's it's not possible. always the case. So anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jess, please uh, wear this loss with a badge of honor, because like I said, you just faced the final boss in a video game in the first round of a crazy tournament with some of the best players in the league. So I hope that you take all of the learning experiences you can from this and you just come back swinging because I know you will. Thanks so much, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Classy interview there by Jess Schloth and the Den mother herself, Kate Mulligan. This was a match where, look, the guy who was supposed to win won, but the differences in that first round it was anything but easy. And then that second round came in, as Jess said, there was just a couple of mistakes and is using those JTs. Maybe if she if she saves one for the third round, maybe she gets to one of those other answers. Who knows? It, it, it's it's one of those things. She's still a rookie. Hey, she's still learning. And she played come very, to you very well. Right the knowledge away, is there. And you can tell that, that the sleepers is going to be back. It doesn't come to you right at the moment. Yeah, and we're very lucky that we have like a manager for the managers repeat. like Jen Sturger, Kate Mulligan. You know, just That's it, why you it, have it, taking it way too hard on herself, thinking she did something right. Nobody did anything wrong here. As a matter of fact, Jessica Schloth is probably currently experiencing what every champion has at some point early on in their career where they had a tough loss they knew they could have played better maybe just done that with that question more or just switched a couple things around and maybe gotten the w that's what it takes sometimes you have to feel that loss before you feel that majestic win which i'm sure is in slow's future and so a lot of excitement for her down the road right now the tournament saw this win and they know that dan merle's coming and hell's coming with him and no by hell i don't mean having to endure kaiser apparently yeah well, either way, Mark, we are in tournament season, and man, what a run it is so far. You got Saul versus Moose Haas. That's going down in the Moose. IG tournament. Zipper versus Janine. Brittany Young versus James White. And talk about the den. Well, Kate Mulligan is going to have her opportunity at her first championship where she is going to be managing the major, Thomas Harper, on the 10th, September 10th, on pay-per-view against the hunter, Andrew DeMolanta, for the Star Wars title. That's going to be a barn burner. Yes, it is. We got a lot of cool live events coming up. New York is right around the corner, as is downtown Los Angeles at the Globe Theater for the Schmodown Spectacular. Get tickets at the Schmodownlive.com. Stand up tickets at markellis.live. Where you may see Christian Harlow. Who knows who's going to pop up on one of those silly shows? We love our community. We love you, especially our patrons. Check out that $10 tier if you want free pay per views for the rest of the season. That's Christian. I'm Mark, and we bid you. Adieu. Adieu. Well, um, like I said earlier, uh, if the answer doesn't come to you right away and you feel like you need to use a JTE, use a JTE.
It doesn't matter if you use just one to get the answer right, or if you just use all three of them. It's just... <laughs> That's why JTE rules exist to be used. And, uh, well, in this case, they helped her get the answer right, leading her into a um, tied ball game going into round two with with the great Dan Merle, and really, that's really all you can ask for when you're going up against somebody like this. And, uh, well, it was a tough match. Uh, a lot of people would say that uh, the obvious outcome happened, but, like I said, I, I, I wore this thing for a reason today. I was rooting for the underdog, and just, you know, didn't happen. It, it was uh, kind of a losing battle, but... You know, that's just what happens uh, sometimes. Uh, she did a lot better than me, by the way. I only got answered like six questions correct. But, you know, it's, uh, it's regular singles trivia. I don't really care too much. I have, a, I have another match that I need to watch right now, which is an inner geekdom match. And I'm very, looking, I'm very much looking forward to that one. So uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, get myself for that. So uh, until, until then, everybody, bye down. Hello again everybody! I really hope you enjoyed this video, cause I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time guys, I'll see you guys next time.